On the outside, it's only a movie. On the inside, it made taking a shower an act of fear. After 30 years, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho is still the masterpiece by which all suspense films are judged. New generations still reel in shock at the surprise ending. Was there ever a real Norman Bates? On Inside Edition, the story behind the story of the classic Psycho. Welcome to Inside Edition. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thank you for being with us today. A little later on, Ralph Nader will investigate an accident waiting to happen in San Francisco Bay. But up front today, perhaps the most talked about film of all time, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. This summer marks the movie's 30th anniversary, and there are some very interesting behind-the-scenes tales surrounding Psycho, like, did the villain Norman Bates really exist? We sent Joel Loy inside the making of Psycho. Of course, in a flash, there was the knife, and in no time, the victim tumbled and fell with a horrible crash. I think the bat broke immediately and hit the floor. The year is 1960. A rather portly gentleman with the slight trace of an American accent is Alfred Hitchcock, film director. He's promoting his new movie, a movie which would forever change the face of terror at the cinema. Troika, a low-budget thriller about a young man named Norman Bates a shy motel keeper whose hobby was taxidermy. Norman was a strangely odd fellow, dominated by and obsessed with his mother. A son is a poor substitute for a lover. The film is perhaps best remembered for the shocking murder of the character played by leading lady Janet Lee in the now classic shower scene. That scene made a horrifying and lasting impact on audiences everywhere. It also gave Alfred Hitchcock yet another chance to display his famous wry wit. My father always quotes the funniest thing he had at the end of it, a letter uh, saying, uh, Mr. Hitchcock, ever since uh, my wife saw Psycho, she won't uh, take a shower and she's beginning to smell. What do I do? So he sent a letter back saying, send her to the cleanest. <laughs> There are only two on-camera murders in the whole film, but the level of horror was higher than American audiences had ever experienced with the movies. They call it the Psycho House, and it's still here on the back lot at Universal Studios in Hollywood. It's the place where Norman Bates lived with Mother, and many think it is the quintessential old dark house. But the horrors that Hitchcock and the other filmmakers manufactured here in Hollywood are almost pale in comparison to the real-life events that acted as a catalyst for everything that came after. It was 1957, and a half a country away from here, when the gruesome details first came to light. Plainfield, Wisconsin, then as now, primarily a farming community. Back in 57, in this house, there lived a strangely odd little man, a man once dominated by and now obsessed with his long-dead mother. His name was Eddie Gein. He did odd jobs, even some babysitting. Now, most folks thought Eddie was just a trifle foolish, but when the lady who owned the local hardware store disappeared and police checked out Ed Gein's place, they walked into a scene from hunting season in hell. And all of a sudden, the sheriff hollered to us to come out in the shed and... He had the body hanging in the shed with the head off and all dressed out just like a dream. Ed Gein, the mad butcher of Plainfield, confessed to two murders and robbing bodies from nine graves. His house held an unspeakable collection of female body parts. Psychiatrists thought Gein may have had a desire for a substitute for his mother, a replica or a body that could be kept forever. Gein spent the rest of his life in state hospitals. The press had a field day, and Ed Gein was to become the man who launched a million screams. It was on this site that Ed Gein's house of horrors once stood, but most of the folks of Plainfield had a very low tolerance for the circus atmosphere and all the media attention. And when word spread that some budding entrepreneur wanted to buy the property to turn it into a sort of grisly horror museum, that apparently was the last straw. The following spring, the house burned to the ground. Most folks think it was arson, but officials never pressed the investigation. But what couldn't be destroyed was the image, the idea of what happened here. An idea that one man couldn't get out of his mind. A man who at the time lived less than 50 miles from here. 
Robert Block kept asking himself how could this happen in a little town like his own, where everybody thought they knew about everybody else. It's only possible if nobody else knows these crimes are being committed. And it occurred to me it would be even more of a possibility if the killer himself didn't know these crimes were being committed. How could that be? If he assumed another personality at the time, somebody that may have dominated and controlled him in life and is now dead and still dominates and controls him, his mother. Block's fearsome fantasies became the novel Psycho. Hitchcock snapped up the movie rights and immediately began to put his unique stamp on the story. The brilliant casting of actor Anthony Perkins as Norman Bates. The little touches like the menacing cop wearing sunglasses and even a bathroom fixture. In 1960, no toilet had ever been seen on the screen before. And I said, if we flush that toilet on screen, the audience is going to be so unsettled. Uh, and they really will not in a million years know what's coming. Audiences are still being affected by Psycho, right up to the surprise ending and beyond. I think every director who's ever tried to do a thriller or a horror film takes from Hitchcock. Hitchcock John Carpenter directed Halloween and a host of other modern horror epics. Uh, Norman Bates scares me, but I don't hate him. Is there something to that? Well, I think we are not all Norman Bates, a little bit down there in the dark corner of the mind. And uh, I think that we don't hate him because he is us in some way. We all go a little mad sometimes. Haven't you? And what would the late Sir Alfred Hitchcock, master of the macabre, have to say about all this fuss over Psycho? It's only a movie. Well, the Psycho machine continues. They are working on Psycho 4 now, this time taking a look at old Norman when he was a kid.